All right, we are back with week four of Otter Talk, and uh, you know today, unfortunately, I had to be the host because Leper is sick with the uh, mono. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but I'm here with my co-host Genetics, out of all people, 
to talk about these gold teams, we have two guests. We have uh, Dean and Trashy, and then we have Peas behind the scenes putting all these uh, graphics up. Genex, how are you doing today? Dude, we're doing good. It's Sunday. Sunday equals fun day equals otter talk, baby. We're so hyped up. Genex, did you go to church today? Yeah, man. You know, I had to say my prayers. I had to eat my Wheaties when I got up this morning. You know, we're feeling <laughs> holy. We're feeling great. Oh, Dean Trashy, how you doing? Uh, I'm not going to lie. I woke up like maybe an hour ago. And I'm just now waking up. I have a giant can of Monster. I'm like halfway through it. I'm feeling energized. It's Otter Talk, baby. Let's get it. I'm midway through remodeling a bathroom. Um... Ordered my pop's lunch as an excuse to take off for a few minutes, and we're here for Otter Talk. You know how it is. Damn, did you eat Taco Bell yesterday? That's why you have to remodel it? Uh, Nova, the shower collapsed on me. What the Because you, <laughs> you ate Taco Bell, right? Oh. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is shower collapsed. It happens. I mean, I, talking Water about things damage. collapsing on you, I definitely had a, a, a garage door like collapse on me at work and break my nose. Woo. Did you sue? Uh, not yet. I'm I'm going to. Oh man, so, yeah. nice. That is subscribe to uh, only otters. What do you do? Uh, all right. And then, uh, peace. How are you doing? Oh, you know, hanging in there, doing great. Happy to uh, have uh, made it to playoffs in my risen league that I was in just for the fun, fun times. But other than that, doing hey, pretty good. Congrats. Thank you. All right. So. As you can see on this uh, beautiful graphic, is we have the matchups this week, and now we have the standings right now. And, you know, at the top of the list, we got BDE Typhoon sitting at a perfect series, perfect game score at 3-0 and 6-0 game score. We got Hyperion right after it with only one game loss. Then we got Rev Eternal sitting at 2-1, Miscast Gold at 2-1, Rev Regalia at 2-1, BDE Corruption at 2-1, Conduit Prime at 1-2, Flannel Ethereal at 0-3, Flannel Zephyr at 0-3, and then Nameless at 0-3. Dean wow. Trashy. If you had to right. give the teams a power ranking, would the, the standings actually be in order from, uh, you know... God, no. Would that be Absolutely uh -uh. not. Absolutely uh -uh. Straight not. Straight up, no. I just want to I just want to point out, uh, we did our own little cast, me and uh, Dean, a couple days ago. I called MCG some frauds. I've been vindicated. They've been proven Okay, frauds. okay, hold on, hold on. Nah, you so, said they were them. I said they I, were frauds. Then they got so, smoked by Prime. So, I'm just here's, saying. The, here's the thing that happened. Conduit Prime, uh, they made a whole shift in their organization. And I guess Hoodie is the solution. Because they went from, ah, like, yes. a... Uh, they, they, they went from a team that had, like, no direction to now, like, playoff contender for gold. So, I don't know. I guess Prime are just them now. Nah, I still stand by my MCG or Frauds. I don't think, I think out the of team any of the 2-1 teams that they can compete. I think I... they get smoked by every other 2-1 team. Fair, but the other 2-1 teams I think are they even get smoked by and the two Rev teams. teams. So it's okay, like... I think they lose to BDE. I think they lose to Conduit again. I think they lose to Regalia. So, yeah. that fourth place standing is kind of kind of sus. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I I want to argue for them more because Mr. Cats are the boys, and I I love those guys. But great like, guys, only, great guys. But yeah, th there's only so much that I could argue for. It's like, man, they're just I, they just have fraudulent placement in the standings right now. Unless they yeah. step up and they show me that their laning phase can be better than it has been, um, yeah. I'm not gonna be able to have a lot of faith in them. Especially when you go back and you look at like who they've had to play to get here, because they played yeah. the two flannel teams and now conduit. So it's like the only other team that's had like weaker strength of schedule is Typhoon, mm -hmm. and Typhoon has gone perfect game score. So like, yeah. I don't know. I I don't think that they're like a bad team. I think that they could still like sneak into that sixth place because what like, gold is top six for playoffs. Yeah, like I'm not putting them bottom six. I mean, I'm not putting them bottom two. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think there's there's room for them to improve, and it's pretty clear. But I think if you were to, like, right now do a PR and do, like, a, a grading these teams, they'd be at, like, seven. Yeah, that's about where I have them. Uh, I think that the most fraudulent thing, though, like, based on the standings, uh, I'm still going to talk 
talk smack until we actually like play them in series. I think Typhoon is so fake. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. When the, when the split was starting, Typhoon on paper terrified me. Yeah. After watching same. the Zephyr Typhoon series, I'm no longer nearly as scared about this team as I used to be. Like they yeah. struggled against Zephyr, a winless team. Yeah, Zephyr's I mean, in a single game this entire. Do you guys? Tournament. Yeah, so you guys know who Typhoon plays are played already? They played both. Yeah. The, they, they, they played the they all three own three games. Yeah, they, they played, yeah, played all the three own three nameless. Games. But here's here's the thing. Here's the thing that I I brought up in the trashy like fake stream, and that I'm gonna bring up here is that against Nameless they had a 16 kill game that went 30 minutes that was within 1k gold until like the last three or four minutes. Zephyr so, like, also almost beat them too. Like yeah, these aren't clean wins, and for a top tier team, these should be clear wins against these teams. Yeah, because like you're you're judging them against like the three worst teams in the league by like. Mm-hmm everyone else's like scoreline and everyone else's like metrics and stats or whatever so it's like yeah well like trash you're saying you want them to be just absolutely like dominant and they're not yeah i mean you look at how how they did against nameless i mean you look at how some of the other teams have done against nameless and it's like yeah you know i don't think i don't think corruption was close against nameless and i wouldn't call corruption a top three team i think corruption are like probably like in that they're fourth of, they're, they're like they're in that fourth weird. to sixth range where it, i think i think it depends on what version of corruption you get like yeah you, you roll your dice did you get the nat 20 or did you get like somehow three nat ones yep pretty much that's they're very very just hard to predict and then yeah i guess we should actually make a tier list now huh yeah uh <laughs> i think that right now the only s tier team uh is hyperion really? i don't know about that one <laughs> i say eternal I, I think you all these teams think... are shit. I'll be honest. <laughs> well, yeah, we're a gold league. Like we're not. Okay, so, none of well, these teams are good. We're in gold. Right? But we, if we look at last week's stream match, right? We saw Hyperion play uh, against uh, Rev Eternal. Yeah, that series looked like either team could win by just smashing the other. It's just whoever just like got out to a early lead kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, because yeah. everything was so messy that any small like mistakes that they fix, like against so, against each other, they would win. Yeah, like I'm saying that they're like they're very competitive with each other. I don't think one is like a mile away from the other. I, think I, I don't think that like, it's like neck I don't and think neck. That, no, I don't think that like we're super far behind. But I, I could come up with like a whole bunch of excuses for why Eternal lost that series, and like it's very easy to blame draft because yeah, we into draft like three games in a row. <laughs> Or like at least at least the last two games we just like completely did not give ourselves anything to play with, but like I think I judge Hyperion's like strength of schedule so far, and it's like what they have week one they had Ethereal okay whatever week two they had Conduit okay you know not a bad team but they aren't Conduit mm-hmm. week two is not the same as Conduit week three, and now they just played us so like they they've oh, yeah, had no, a they've pretty had decent tough. strength of schedule. I think yeah, Conduit it... has had the hardest strength of schedule so far. By, oh by far. Because they've had the two rev teams in Hyperion. Yeah, the I guess uh, so. If I ever put a team in S tier, it means that I know they're putting like they're above the rest to the point where like I don't like, see them even losing a game. I can't put any teams in S tier because I feel like every team could easily lose a series out of like you know nowhere. What? I'll accept yeah. that. I'll accept that. I, th- um, I think if that's how you're judging your S tier. I would agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, As a newer person to the scene, right? It very much feels like the leads that uh, players gain in lane in in this tier are very much indicators of how the game goes in in a lot of cases, right? To an extent, we do have an outlier squad. Zephyr, in every single series they have played, <laughs> in, in all but one game, they've gotten major leads, like four or 5,000 plus gold leads. And that's against Typhoon, that's against that's against every team they face so far, and they have managed to lose every single series. They lost a game while up twelve kills to zero. I don't understand Zephyr. I, I genuinely don't. <coughs> I, I, I think they're like they're one change away from being like yep. a, a, a genuine like top tier team. How mm-hmm. the hell? I mean, I they just gotta team... work on their mid game um, transitioning. I, I guess. I mean, they could have the best laning phase ever, but if they just donkey iram 
play mid lane yeah. and just don't have any wave management or any kind of like neutral objective uh positioning yeah. then they're just going to throw um but obviously like, i think that's the thing that... probably too. yeah because like I, I think that's the thing that's like the most confusing to me is like what where are they getting like lost specifically in like this objective setup because like at, at gold elo i don't think that like obsec is like super hard you just have to like get to the thing first and then either okay does our comp burst down the objective? Yes, we burst the objective and leave. Does our comp want to take the fight? Okay, we like maybe hit the dragon once or twice and then kill the enemy team. I don't think it's that hard at this elo. Mm -hmm. And it, like, what what is what is hard here? Are they just like not seeing the angles? Is there? Uh, okay, okay. I I'm, I'm gonna give you like a quick little scene, and then that'll just paint the picture for what's happening in their games, right? Okay. You guys are up, all right? Your, your mid laner, who's got most of a gold on your team, gets caught out alone. Whatever, right? There's no objectives. There's nothing for the enemy team to take. You decide, four man, push to the enemy um, inhib tower. While you know three of them are in the top jungle. They engage on you, 5v4. You manage to come out, 2-2, two to two, right? The last two remaining are both tank... It's an Ornn and, um, and I think a Nautilus. And you guys walk back in to take the 2v3 again. Uh, then your team reinforced and you guys just get wiped. And you lose a 5k goal lead in two minutes. That's how they, That's what happens with them. They do that almost every game. So it's it's just bad fights. Yeah, it's just them like opting into bad fights. Uh, then like doubling down on the bad fights. Okay, so, so this is what I would tell this team then. If that is like what's going on. Have a no button on your team. Mm -hmm. Have someone to be like, oh, we're going to take this fight. We're going to take this fight. No. No, stop. Because, <laughs> yeah. like, you, every team needs, like, that one guy to just be, like, the loudest one saying no as the yep. voice of reason. And um, another another issue they have is I've noticed for their jungler, he likes to play aggressive champions. We're talking, like, um, Zin Zhao's, you know, that style of champion. Mm -hmm. But then he plays as a power farmer. And it just doesn't quite fit. He's playing champions that, like, their whole style is being aggressive, getting early leads. Of uh, then he plays to farm for the vast majority of the game. Of uh, and play for team fights. Okay, I feel called out. <laughs> I feel called out. Like uh, there was a Zin game. I think it was like their their first game. He played Zin, and he ganked once in eighteen minutes. And it's like okay, okay that's, that's just not that's what you're supposed aggressive. to do as a Zin Zhao. Like that's just no. not Zin. No, that's crazy. Like if you see that like you're on the wrong side of the map. And it's like, okay, mm -hmm. there's nothing that I can do to, like, salvage the situation in a lane. I'm going to go ahead, take grubs, or I'm going to try to, like, counter jungle. I think that's, like, fine. But, yeah, in general, like, you're picking, like, the Zen or, like, uh, like a Jarvan, that type champion, to, like, pick a lane to snowball. But it, it, it can also be hard if there isn't a lane to snowball. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so. so now we uh, are done talking shit about, uh, Zephyr, yeah, bad Zephyrs, yeah, yeah. Even though I think they could easily be three and at this point without how many games they're. I, um, yeah, pretty much. If they stop throwing, uh, they'll be a top team. I, I think that yeah. so if we're doing like a like PR, if we're doing like a, a top like ranking these teams, like actually, I think Hyperion yeah. Eternal are one and two. Yep. I think Typhoon uh -huh. just because they haven't lost yet are at least like fourth. I kind of yeah, want to put them below Regalia because of bias, I would, but I don't I would think put I them can. Below I, I think I would. I don't think there's a Actually, way for me to actually say Typhoon, Typhoon below Regalia without it sounding biased as hell. So I'm going to put them at third, just so that... <laughs> but, like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think there's a very strong argument for Regalia to be above Typhoon. I think it's Regalia's just... had a um, much harder strength of schedule, to be honest, oh, than Typhoon. Yeah. So I mean, it's I pretty hard. I personally <laughs> would make the case to put it's hard, Regalia It's hard to beat, them. like, a... Facing all zero right and three teams for your first three matches, right? Yeah, like, they, like they've had the easiest strength of schedule by far, by a country mm -hmm. mile. Yeah. yeah, so I would go like one, two, Hyperion, Eternal, third, three, four, because I'd put them like neck and neck would be Regalia, and uh, Typhoon. And yep. then underneath that would go Corruption. I think they they just yeah. like hold that fifth slot. I don't think anyone yeah. below them deserves it. No, I, I think there's like a very clear one, two, a very clear three, four, and like five. Yep, and then six, seven are they're, they're Mr. Cats and Conduit, and then yeah. the bottom three are the bottom three. And I think in order, it's Zephyr, Ethereal, Nameless. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. Which, like, sick. Let's just uh, go to the matchups and let's uh, talk about what's going to go on this week. So let's start with Final Ethereal and BD Corruption. I'm assuming this one is going to be sided with Corruption. Yes. Why do we keep making teams do the flannel gauntlet? Why does this keep happening? We're a team. No, play, actually, one actually, of the flannel teams week one, and then week almost, two play the next one. For almost the entire season, it is going to be Zephyr facing a team and Ethereal facing that same team the next week. That's that's so funny yep. to me that that keeps happening. Yeah, um, that's uh how the schedule is made because it's like a but yeah. Um, well, the schedule I, maker does that. Yeah, gotcha. I would give this to corruption. For sure. Yeah, I'm. I'm feeling. I I don't know how to grade corruption at all. Like on mm -hmm. one hand, I think that it should be a two zero based on like how strong they are, and I like think I think dropping be. a game to Zephyr, they're not going to drop one to Ethereal. Mm -hmm. But then it's corruption, so you never know. So it's going to be two one probably. Looking yeah. at how they drop that game makes me more confident that they won't drop one here. Looking yeah. Yeah, looking at their match history, they've kind of reeled it in from their week one uh, Garen and Orn mid picks. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I feel like they've rebuilt that confidence, and maybe they get a little wild. So is I think it could be a potential upset. Yeah, uh, I mean, you look at game two. Absolutely. You see a Kha'Zix jungle. It's like yeah. uh, that might explain a little bit of why they lost that game too. You know. Yeah. It's just like they get a little bit crazy with their, their drafts. So if uh, they pick some disrespectfully, the team can absolutely take uh, advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, next um, up, we have the best series of the week, in my opinion. Oh, for free. Hyperion Regalia sure. is going to be... That's going to be another banger. Yeah, it's going to be a banger. Because they're both teams that just that love to fight. Like They like to throw hands, especially in mid lane. I think Ball Slap versus Dion is going to... like be a really fun lane to watch so so this series to me this series to me is either like ziggy just completely shuts down scrambles and regalia isn't able to set up for any objectives and they just get kind of exposed to oh mm -hmm. or ball slap is able to actually hands diff dion and be able to like save his mid laner and like bring his pressure to the rest of the team because like that's to, to me, that is yeah. the lifeblood of these two teams. It is Ziggy versus Boss Lab. If you're to like personify as like one player is like the face of each team. Um, one, one other matchup I want to talk about is top lane. It's going to be a slugfest between Cook and Indigo. Oh yeah, because I I think that those two are both like low key. Like everyone knows how good Indigo is, but Cook is low key also like a phenomenal mm -hmm. top laner. Yeah, and I think. Uh... I think mid lane is going to be one of those like, lanes where it's just like whoever wins that lane is going to run away with it. And I think it's going to happen yeah. either. I think either person can do it, but it's like as soon mm -hmm. as one of them gets a lead, we're just going to run away with it. For sure. Um, and then I'm trying to think of like how would I grade the bot lanes? I think the bot lanes are roughly even. So it really does just come down to like mm -hmm. who is a little bit more solid in like macro. And I've, having played against both these teams, I think Hyperion is just a little bit more like solid and like their how they want to like fight around those neutrals. So I think I'm gonna give it to Hyperion two one. Um I'm gonna I agree could, there. Yeah, I could see a world where Regalia does just like all the pieces like click together, right? Yeah, and then like Eternal versus MC. I mean that one's kinda simple. I think Eternal. Yeah, we're gonna five oh Mystic Cats. I'm sorry guys. It's yeah. gonna be uh not even close, my bad. <clears throat> not if you pick Tom Kench when your support ADC doesn't even play it. Yeah, that was um That's a classic. That one that whole draft kind of pissed me off because it was like, okay. As, I mean you guys least... are just ego checking them. And yeah, that's, that's what it you was. You guys got burned. Yeah. So I'm gonna go I'm gonna go a little bit deep in that one, right? Yeah. Billy Badass, with how good they could carry a game, they could do the same thing opposite and just fucking throw the living shit out of every game by just going balls deep and just continuously fighting. He was like 0-4 yeah. on Tom Kench fighting against an Ash. Also, I don't know why you guys didn't be one Ash that third game. That was uh, dumb. You, you, know, you want to know why we didn't? Why? Uh, we we didn't because we were like, okay, well, they left up Talia, and that's that's the Dean champ, so let's pick the Talia. And then the whole time, I was just kind of thinking, guys, Ash won both the last two games. 
but I didn't want to say anything because I was like already tilted and there was no way for me to say it without being just like a kind of a, a dick about it. Mm-hmm. And we thought that we, we thought that we would have an answer for the Ash and then we just didn't. So we our, our draft prep sucked that series. And then it, it showed because we got I mean, I feel like it was just kind of obvious with that, like, just like, oh, let's see. First game, Ash went like 12 and two. Second game, Ash went nine and oh. Yeah. Like, yeah. if we're not going to take Ash, we need to have a better answer than Vain Lulu. Yeah, I mean, you can't, can't pick Vane there against an Ash. You're just going to get screwed in lane. And the the big part about that draft as well is, like, you don't have anything to actually protect your Vane. Um, yeah. No, we, game, we didn't. That was the third game, right? Yeah. Game two, yeah. you guys are just inting all over the place. You guys couldn't let your late game, like, actual comp scale. Your yeah. Senna, that was fasting Senna, had, like, 36 stacks at 20 minutes. Yeah. So... And no, I want to. We, we got blown out. We got blown out. Game two, straight up. And I want to advocate a little bit for Mystic Cats here, right? They mm-hmm. think they got caught sleeping a little bit. Maybe they didn't have the best draft prep, uh, into into Prime last week, right? Kind of yeah. under new management, we're taking a little bit of a different direction. Um, so, I, I I think we're being maybe a little tough on them. Um, but I yeah, I still think Eternal probably walks away with the series. It's closer uh, than I think people say. I to will be say, fair, um, I have been advocating the MCG frauds um, angle for the last since uh, end of week one, so I'm gonna be a little hard on them. They did lose their coach, so let's see how that affects them. Yeah, I I will ah. not I will not sleep on Mr. Cats. I will not trash talk those guys. I will not like do anything because I think that they can legitimately hang. Uh, yeah. The the two biggest gaps between us, so like as as players, to me, are like jungle support. Um, even though we're like hot hot off the presses, Eternal does not have uh, our starting bot lane for the series because they're both Ooh. have like IRL commitments. So we are starting General Denobi and Yes Parade, uh, our two subs. So oh. I don't think okay, that changes um, much. I don't think Ooh. that changes. I'll call, changes it, a, I'll call it a two one. one. I'll call it a two one Eternal now. I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say the opposite. If you're not starting your bot lane, man, miss the cats. Their bot lane shine. Oh, you're not having Billy Badass. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm going. I'm going. Miss the cats. Gold two one. I'm sticking with Eternal two one. I'm, I'm just. With uh, I'm just. Uh, I'm a. I'm a Mystic Cats doubter. I'm not gonna lie. I'm. I'm I, their biggest op. Mystic Cats two so zero. Here's what I will say. Here is. Here's what I will say. You know, I'm going uh, all in. Yes, Eternal yes, two zero. Yes, Parade is one of the best peeling supports in the league, and the fact that he is not a starter on our roster is honestly, I'll take it because it means that we have two goaded supports on our roster. Um, and then it's up to me to not throw, and it's up to Dan to just sit back and chuck out Ash W and just do damage, and then we'll win. All right, let's go to the next one, which is Conduit Prime versus BD Typhoon, which I feel like is going to be a pretty good series. Uh, hot take, Conduit 2-1. They're the strongest team that Typhoon has had to play against. And if they're... If they can, like, figure out a way to make Kevin have a week two week, then I think Conduit has a legitimate chance. Um, um I'm sticking with Corruption. I'm saying Corruption 2-1. That's crazy. They're not even in the game. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. Wrong one. Wrong typhoon, one. Typhoon, typhoon. 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 I'm bugging. I'm bugging. Uh, the BDE logos threw me off. That's fair. I'm uh pretty I'm pretty close to the conduit, so I'm gonna not not vote on the series. I will say, we have already begun prep for this week. Um, we fully intend to win the series, so um, no predictions from me. As not the conduit with, owner, uh, as not the conduit owner, I'm gonna say two o conduit easy. I'm I'm sticking with Typhoon two o simply because, man, I just don't think that hoodie is gonna be able to hold his own against Bean. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think uh, Hoodie's a bad player, but I don't think that he is, like, a hands-down laning upgrade from a Kovey. And I don't think a Kovey is hanging with Bean in lane. I don't see uh, I don't see Hoodie doing that. I think that what... At this point, I have to wonder what the massive change was. Because, like, I, I guess that, like, last uh, like last week, he, like, played significantly better in lane on, like, that more, like, carry style on his uh, Vlad. So... I think that Hoodie, whatever X factor he offers to this team, I think that it might be enough for them to at least take a game. The safe bet is Typhoon 2-1, so I'm going to go with Conduit 2-1 because I'm feeling spicy, and I think that it's going to catch up to Typhoon this week. 
from, if I uh, remember from what correctly, I've gathered. I, when I, whenever I watched Hoodie like in the past, and he was playing jungle, he would always make the dumbest dives or plays or just like get caught out in the jungle. And it put him super far behind. Obviously, when you're laning, you're not going to have that effect of uh, running it down and giving double buffs to the enemy ADC. But um, I think it that gives... <laughs> Yeah, you just steal the double buffs and then run it down bot lane. TP yes, bot lane, sir. die. Yes, sir. From, yeah, uh... but that's that's uh, I think, well, like he's played like three hundred games this season so far, and it's not like he's just playing jungle exclusively. He's just playing, you know, a lot of yeah. random crap. Yeah. From, so from what I um, gathered, his um, his X factor is more so just that certain players weren't getting along as well, and he kind of helped bridge the gaps, and now they're you know, communicating and getting along a lot better. So that's his yeah. X factor for not tilted yeah. going into game. It's like what I did with Armada last season. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the entire I'm team has... Uh, I apologize. I uh, The entire team has been being much more accountable uh, for their actions and their, their comms in game. And I think that's been a huge part of Prime's uh, turnaround, right? Uh, I don't think... I don't think a single team I've ever known in probably any division has had uh, kind of the turbulent month that this team has had. So uh, we're finally yeah. on the right direction, and, and that's really all that matters. Yeah, I've got all a right. soft spot for Prime since I was originally on this roster long before they left their original home. So I'm going to say, I still have to say 2 on Typhoon. I just don't see, I don't see Hoodie doing it top lane. Yeah. I think I think it's better for uh, Eternal if Typhoon loses the series, so I'm going for uh, Conduit two one. I I would like Conduit to win it. I think it would look really good for them, like, and it would be a big mm -hmm. confidence booster for them as a roster. Yeah. All right, let's go to the last game. Let's make it quick because I do have a game in like two hours. Um, Final Zephyr versus Nameless Rising. Zephyr two zero. Go next. If Zephyr doesn't two zero, um, I'm resigning. I they're yeah. I, I don't see the avenue for nameless. I've I've struggled to find one all season. It's I if this is not the series that Zephyr wins, then just like massive changes need to be made to that team. Yes, if you start off the season four and zero, it's going to be pretty difficult to get to a point where you're making playoffs. You basically have to win most. You of have to the, win out, yeah. Yeah, uh, you don't really have to win. I think a four and five record would actually get in. But um, it, it can, but I think it depends on game score after that, right? In it's it's it top does. six that make playoffs, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's top if... ten. We are inclusive here. Everyone gets in. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that would be crazy. Say, huh? yeah, be crazy. Say, yeah, so I think <laughs> I six. think if you want like your path to playoffs to be in your hands, you need to win this week. Because you look at, at who Zephyr has coming up after this. And and they're in trouble, right? Like they've faced corruption, Mysticats. You know what that means? Who's left for them? Next week, yep. Regalia. After that, who are they facing? It's a uh, tough. They they're this, facing Ethereal. Week six, yeah. Yeah, and then and then they jump to just straight tougher games from there. Conduit. They still have their Typhoon, I think, at some point. And uh, e Eternal, Eternal, Eternal week eight. So then. Yeah. I so think it's, that's what I don't know who that is. Week nine, it's week nine is be, broken on the website. Fix it. I think week nine should be uh, Typhoon. Week nine is face Typhoon yet. Yeah, week nine's broken. Yeah, it takes oh, you to shit. back to week seven. So if okay. um, I think this is a must-win game for for Zephyr or yeah. or even Eternal. <coughs> I, I, I'm yeah. not Eternal. What's Whoever wants a shot at playoffs has to win this week. Yeah, you have to win it. Like you could still make it to playoffs losing this week. But it becomes a very scary and a very, very tough path where, to an extent, you don't have control over your own future. Yep. Fantastic. Well, that will do it for the Gold Otter Talk. So next up, we've got Platinum. Thank you for joining me, Trash and Dino. Um, good luck in your games this week. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll be back in like a few minutes. Sweet. Thanks for having us. Peace. Peace.
We are back, and this time we got platinum. We got a guest named Not So Dark, and uh, the roller coaster ride that this player has for you know this, over the course of the last few seasons went from being a shit tier player to a, a, being a mediocre player. But they'll be able to talk about some platinum gameplay here. Um, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing good. How, how are you guys doing? We're good. We're good. Dark, remember when you were like a IBS player? Uh, I don't, because I was never an IBS player. Well, you should have been. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Is that an invitation for the next IBS league, so I can play? You can play in the uh, OCO. Okay. I think they have an IBS league. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Alright, um, so, right now, standings from top to bottom. It goes Conduit Gremlins, Dynasty Celestials, Goon Squad Gaming, SG Proton, Agni Kai, Conduit Esports, you mad. Big Duck Entourage, Nameless Gnomes, First Class Esports, and AIE Anguish. Yeah. What do you think about overall the power rankings of this uh, division? Uh, I feel like it's pretty stable right now. I think the top, I want to say, six teams are a cut above the bottom four. And. Yeah, I think it's gonna stay like this. Like, there's interchangeable top six. Obviously, like, Gremlins right now have had a really good run. Three weeks is not a big, um, you know, indicator of how good we are. And we've already played only played like not the best teams. Like, I would say bottom fours. So, like, we could we could drop from first to like third, fourth, and you know, top six is probably gonna be the same. Top six is I think also makes it to playoff. So, what we have right now is probably going to be what playoffs look like. Uh, I'm assuming your sixth team is going to be kind of with esports. Yeah. All right. I think it very much has a clear cut, like top two, uh, like a middle packed mm -hmm. right of six who all are still kind of figuring things out, and then a, a very clear bottom two who, who maybe. Um, aren't as up to snuff as the, the rest of the rosters, right? Um that, that middle six though gets kinda gets kinda wild. I'm pretty sure first class is going through some like roster changes possibly. Mm -hmm. um, All the bottom three have been like in the limbo of can we use our players next week or not or we're gonna have like subs because even AIE Anguish they they couldn't make it week one and week two they they played with their roster. They like obviously they didn't do well, but obviously they have internal issues that couldn't make a week one. Same with first class esports. They first week they didn't have their mid laner that I that I know personally. And second week their ADC wasn't able to play. And I don't even know what happened third week. And then Nameless obviously, as you said, going through terrible weather. They have They've had so many subs and changes to their roster that it's really hard to say that can they even get out of, like, I don't know, week five without the whole roster imploding. Valid, valid. Yeah, I think that's the name of the game, I, I'm i assuming. So what's going to end up happening, right? If some of these teams go to 0-5 or 0-4, it's gonna, they're just going to withdraw. Um, um, they just don't feel the uh, desire to continue playing when they their hopes of making playoffs is low. I would hope they wouldn't do that, but you know that when you're it losing, is, it's not fun. Tale, tale but, is old as time. 
Yeah, but like they just the roster usually just implodes and they never speak to each other again. <laughs> like we're done mm-hmm. here. Um, but yeah, I, I think I'd agree with you. Like the top six right now are pretty solidified of who they are. Um, in terms of just overall ranking through from like four to six or not four to six, three to six. Um, I think that could be interchanged quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so far, I think the top two are pretty much set in stone. Yeah, I agree. Well, let's yeah, go I, ahead and, uh, I additionally agree. Let's go ahead and uh, go to the schedule for this week. And this is going to be week four. So the first match, we got Big Duck Entourage versus Dynasty Celestials. I'm going to say that's going to be like a 2-0 win for Celestials. Yeah, I had to agree. Uh, I don't think Big Duck has shown anything so far from their roster, and their last week was not the best. Uh, Nancy has proven themselves to be one of the top contenders for playoff runs, so I would say 2-0 Dynasty. I uh, I agree with that as well. I I think Dynasty has very much shown um, shown their strength. Uh, they had a, a slight hiccup, right? But other than that, they've they've been pretty pretty perfect. I, I would also say Celestials uh, will take this one too. Well. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have Goon Squad Gaming versus Conduit Gremlins. Also, can you guys get me a logo of the Gremlins without the background? Yeah, man, it's it's something. We we're working on it. I didn't make it, man. <laughs> I I also on. didn't make this one. <laughs> this is this is my my main man, GBG. Yeah, GBG was put in work. S tier captain, D tier logo maker. <laughs> D tier logo maker. <laughs> um, but. For the for the silly conduit logo team, don't don't let it fool you. It does look a little scuffed, but damn, this team cooking right now, boy. Yeah, yeah. As somebody who's playing on Gunner and Gremlins, I hope you're two zero. Um, and this is our week four where we're playing one of the better teams. Like as I said, three weeks in a row we played not the greatest teams. So like everybody's like, oh, are they frauds? Are they just winning because they're playing the worst teams. This week, if we lose, we're frauds. It'll yeah. be it'll be solidified. If we, even if we're two one, like it's a good team, right? GSG is third on the rankings. Um, but I'm hoping it's a two zero. I think our strengths are pretty clear to our team. I think we we play well together. Not that GSG doesn't like to have had really good games, but I think we're Definitely gonna smash that two zero. Yeah. To to advocate for GSG, uh, though they do have an incredible amount of experience in this scene, whereas Conduit Gremlins only have like two players who have been in the scene for any amount of time. Um, so that very well could come, you know, turn around and and be a, a positive for GSG. It really is just going to come down to to who executes better and who who has more synergy. And I, I, my my gut's still telling me Gremlins is going to take the series. So you're saying that conduit Gremlins are frauds? You've heard it here first from Genetic. <laughs> Listen, like if, we are frauds, if we are frauds and we lose, we can just be like, yeah, we have three new players to comp scene. You know, they get like the, mm-hmm. the initial jitters after week three. You know? <laughs> it's just yeah. what it is. Nice. All right, yeah. Let's go ahead over to the next matchup, which is Acne Kai versus First Class Esports. Now, yeah, I feel like depending on what they do. So, one of the big things is uh, Swedish Pancakes, right? They became an exception player for while playing their games out, uh, and so they currently have. T- well, one of them will be ineligible, um, but there's a possibility that. Sw- Swedish Pancakes might be the actual mid laner um, at some point, and they're going to replace the ADC. But who knows? Those that, those are all uh, from you know rumors floating in the scene well, of first class esports. I'm who's friends with Swedish. <clears throat> I told him to do that. 
Because when we played against, when we first, well, it's not because when we played first class esports, um, we played with their everybody except the mid laner, right? Like Swedish wasn't there, um, right. and we played against their original bot lane, and I don't think they're bad, but I do think Swedish is more, uh, just better overall. You know, like he has macro sense, he has good gameplay. I, I played with him a lot before this, so I do feel like if they do that, like if they this take the bullet and then remove the ADC and put the mid laner in. That might be better for them. But I also on the same note, the ADC is the captain, so they can't really kick the captain. You know, that'd be weird. Yeah, I think I think although I hate that Finney's getting away with playing nothing but Sen and Seraphine every game and actually looking like an imposter in the role, um, I still have to give it to Agnikai, right? There's, 100%, I yeah. think I think there's just too much instability on first class right now that it's like a coin flip. If they actually end up with a, a really solid AD who can be a, a force to reckon with, maybe. But ADC is not the captain, by the way. He's not. That's what I was told. D-Nut? Yeah, D-Nut. Is he captain? Is he captain? That's what Swedish told me. He's like he's the captain. Oh, I don't know. But. I mean, even if he isn't, like, he's obviously the preferred choice, right? They went in week three, when I think Swedish had, like, a few games left. He just didn't complete them. He didn't have them and, in time. He, yeah, he I didn't have he them. Have it anyway, uh, so. And then, I mean, even if he did, I think they would have gone with the, the ADC player, which uh, makes sense to me, because obviously he's been, he's probably the original choice for the roster anyways. Probably. Uh, but Agni Kai, like, on that note, as was uh, Genex was saying, the bot lane does seem fraudulent, but this is not the first time of them playing. Like obviously, they played in Titan not too long ago, and Fini has been doing decently off not playing Seraphine and Senna. He was playing Misfortune, Ezreal, and other champions, um, and he did okay. Like, do I think? They have what it takes to beat first class. Absolutely, I think it's going to be two zero. I think their top side is so strong that it's probably one of the like better top sides in the whole league. And first side doesn't have a chance. Like if any team wants to beat Agni guy, they just need a better bot lane. We'll also say that looking at Agni Kai's sub list, man, first class just take half that roster. <laughs> just take the subs from Agni Kai. That's that's got to be some upgrades in there somewhere. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't have good players sitting on the bench. A lot of good players sitting on their bench as well. Yep. So I got two zero. Dark got two zero. Bully, we got. Fuck. Two zero. <laughs> All right, sounds good. <laughs> He's like making it like, oh, I have to think about it. Well, It'd be crazy if first class yeah. takes one game off Agni Kai, you know? Like, Agni Kai, I think, is like top four for sure. Um, it would give them some hope. It right? would give them hope, but it would also prove that Agni Kai is like a little fraudulent, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe they, their eggs aren't at all in the right basket. Yeah. All right, next matchup. AIE Anguish versus SG Proton. Uh, I'm pretty sure everyone's going to be on the same page on this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. AIE Anguish is going to win. Absolutely. Not so fast. <laughs> not so. Uh, no, I, SG Proton, man, they, they have an insane bot lane, right? They have Chong and, and Yomi, who, who both have been really uh, impressive. Uh, I, I haven't heard of Yomi before, right? Like I, I'm not sure if he's a newer player in the scene, but I've been I've watching him, some of. I've known him for like four years, I think. Okay. Five. Is he? Has uh, he like yeah. climbed up from my uh, IBS? No. No. Okay. I just haven't heard of him. He but he's, played he's on. Played with Billy a lot in the good old days. That oh, makes sense. When toxic Billy was a thing. Well, maybe maybe I'm a, I'm an A English guy. Can we get a heck Billy? Yeah, yeah. Billy, nah. <laughs> it's Joe. 
but yeah, I think Proton. I think they upgraded the jungle with Bread. Um, yeah, Bread, Bread is Bread's too busy. Just... He was supposed to be our other guest today, but he's too busy doing a fantasy baseball draft, like a nerd. Yeah. Look, man, <clears throat> the man's got stuff to do, and I respect that. Yeah, um, he started it. He's okay. First of all, he's doing a fantasy baseball draft, but he's doing an auction fantasy baseball draft. Like, why? Why auction? Auction? So you have to yeah. like pay money to yeah. get players? No, you, like. No, everyone gets like a hundred dollars or something like that, right? And then uh-huh. you bid on players with that. Oh. And if Ooh. like yeah, basically like people will overpay living crap out of like the first couple players, so you just end up having like thirty bucks to fill ten roster slots. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That makes sense. And then you have to pick up scrubs. But anyway, I think this is gonna be an issue proton two oh. Uh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't see it not being a, a proton two L. So anguish wins both yeah. games in fifteen minutes. <laughs> awesome. yeah, yeah, the the warm up bot games they're playing. The last match Oxy. we have is kind of with esports. You mad versus nameless nopes? Yeah. Conduit, oh, hey. the Conduit people. Yeah, Condu- Conduit, you mad? They had a had a a weird week last week. They got the two L. The games looked crazy. From watching it back, uh, I don't know. I they need to lock in a play style. I think that like works for them, and I don't know if they fully figured that out. That's why everything seems so chaotic for them. Um, luckily they have a another week where I I feel like they the players are just upgrades over their counterparts. So uh, you know. More experience on on the UMAD roster. Yeah. I'll say it's going to be UMAD uh, winning this one, but they very well could drop a game or potentially even the series. But I'm going to say I'm going to say two one UMAD. Yeah, Nation's pretty washed. <laughs> That's facts. <laughs> they That's just, facts. Internet is for sure washed. His internet is terrible. Yeah, yeah. I, I really bad guys. lately. Okay, so for this matchup specifically, I feel like. Uh, it, it's pretty hard to say because obviously everybody on Conway UMAD is like a really good player in the scene at least, right? Like everybody knows the players and they're proving themselves over and over again. Somehow they come into BRL and it's not clicking. And it happens all the time with good players, good teams. Um, and so far they've yet to prove themselves. Last week they played first class and it took them what, 40 plus minutes both games to like close out the games and games were pretty yeah. close throughout. Um, I feel like first class just made so many mistakes. Like they could have actually won a game, right? Because it was so close. Um, Human on the other hand has had like a tough schedule. They played Proton first, they played mm-hmm. Dynasty after. Um, and then they have, they have to play like a weaker team in first class and they still fumbled a lot. So I feel like this week is going to be if they can close out the game pretty easily, they can solidify themselves as like one of the better teams. But if they do fumble again and like even drop a game, which I don't think they should as like <clears throat> just looking at their players, if they drop a game that just speaks volumes to what genetics was saying, they just need to fix the play style, they just need to do what's working for them, because I do feel the same. I feel like they're doing too many things. Trying too many new things, you know, cooking a bit on the, on the dock, and they just need to stick to what's working for them, and they need to close our games much, like much better because they have fumbling the closing part, like how we did against our game against gnomes, and they took us a fifteen minutes, even though, like that game was not. If you see it, the end screen, and you'll be like, that does not look close because the other team didn't have anything. And they didn't like we took all the objectives, everything from the map. The other team had like two kills in our in our side of the base, like not even in our base, our side of the base. Like we were playing in their base for like twenty minutes, and we couldn't end the game. Right, that was on our us. But Nomeless did take us there, which means Nomeless, Nameless does have the capacity. Nomeless, yeah, I was just adding the names. Nameless Gums. Uh, they have the they have the capacity to take good teams to like. Um, really, really, um, really hard. Like I feel like if UMAD doesn't close out the games, they're just gonna collapse. So they have to do it. 
<clears throat> two one, yeah. Pixis uh, dropped themselves from Conduit's roster, and then um, I think they're getting added back to Nameless. So big, yeah. Maybe they know what's gonna happen. Hey man, if Nameless can find a roster that works for them, they might have something that's you know good. Because All right, right well, now they're changing rosters every week. I think that will be it for Platinum. Thank you for joining me, Dark, and joining Genex as well. Thanks for having Next me. Next up will be Emerald, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Heck, Billy. Heck, Billy. Okay, bye. Welcome back, everybody, and we are joined here with, I'm not actually sure who our guests are, we're joined with two guests here. Um, <laughs> it's, it's Josh and uh, Control and Delete. <laughs> yeah. There you go. You can call me hey. Storm if you want. That's... Welcome, guys. Storm, Josh, welcome to uh, Otter Talk. We're uh, going over Emerald. We have, first up, Division, Piltover, Standings. And looking at the standings, we have Clown Gaming Forklift in one, uh, deadlocked in a tie with the Ion team, followed by Bloom Abyssal, Blue Pearl Spire, DZG Arcadia, the Shadow Cows, Lotus Crypt, and Omega Gaming Soda Shakers. So, do you guys think that the standings that these teams are in are accurate or? Anyone looking like frauds? What are we thinking? I don't know. The iron team looks pretty, pretty sketch. I think we've gotten away with a lot. Um, the I'm, I'm from the iron team. I'm our mm -hmm. I'm our ADC, I'm the captain, and mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like a weird thought experiment where we just have like the silver mid laner who was like kind of a brand one trick, and now we're just like let's just fucking go with it. And uh, I don't know. It's working. Yeah. I, he hasn't played brand once. <laughs> oh. <laughs> OTP or not, you decide. Yeah, I was about to say, uh, I think it's a little strange that you guys are doing so well. I'm also really surprised to see Bloom Abyss is doing so well. I thought that team was going to, like, miss playoffs. Um, I, I was really hyped on DZG Arcadia. I thought mm -hmm. that team was, like, super good, and they started the season 0-2. So, um... That's like my really big surprises. I'm not surprised to see Clown Gaming Forklift like at the top. I think that team's really good. I think they're probably the best team in Piltover. Yeah, Vaunt I believe they have Vaunted and uh Cyclone as the their jungle mid duo. 
really solid players. I don't know. I've been looking over all the the game recaps, and it looks like all the teams are just really sloppy. Like mm -hmm. half the time I'm playing, I'm feeling like I'm in a solo queue with Fest. Like it's just like, are these guys? What are they doing? I, I don't even know. Uh, it's been like. I don't know, we, we just hear randomly, like, our mid laners getting dove, and then they come away with, like, a kill, because, like, they're trying to hands dip him, and they just... I, I, I don't know, he's silver for a reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, currently the standings have... The two, there's two 3-0 and teams at INT in uh, Clown oh, Gaming, okay. right? And then you have two 0 and 3 teams. Um, we talked about the t um, two top teams a little bit. What do we think is holding the two bottom teams back? Have either of you guys uh, played with them? Yeah, I played against Lotus Script last week. Um, it, I don't know. Like their their jungler was was kind of weird. Um, he got off a, a an early kill with a, a cheese gank bot lane, which was kind of cool. But then our our jungler was just like, okay, well, I guess I'm just gonna perma farm and steal his camps, and he he got up two levels be because of it. Mm -hmm. And then their jungler is just like a level three bully bear, which normally beats Nocturne, but not when Nocturne's two levels up on him. And he just like runs into the dude and they, they kill the team fight like topside. And I'm just like, okay, well, I guess that, that's cool. I, I, half these games, I honestly don't know what's going on. I'm just like AFK and bot lane. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it was just a lot of like really forced fights nonstop when. I, I'm not sure what they're trying to get out of it. Like, I'm pretty sure... I believe everybody in this league is is smart. I, I'm just going to say say that. I know that's kind of a hot take. But um, I, I think that, like, if you take pictures of the game in the moment mm -hmm. and then say, is this smart? Then then they'll answer the correct answer most of the time. But it just, like, their, their jungler was, was... Just kept on choosing fights and uh, that, that weren't in their favor. So just taking take the taking bad fights is what we think is holding these bottom teams back. Um and in terms of uh Piltover, do you guys have you guys played anyone you think should be higher up in standings or was surprising? Uh I can't speak on like the Piltover teams because I'm over mm -hmm. in Zon, so I mean Arcadia was like the only one who, who had kind of a backbone. But we, we kind of entered our draft in, in game two versus them. They they totally could have had game one but, uh, as well, which would have been 0-2 for us. But, but uh, uh, it, it was really, like, it was weird. Because, yeah, it was, it was interesting because their mid laner was, like, the guy to carry. But then he played kind of vegan, like, nonstop. Hmm. Uh, okay. Where, like, I know the casters are calling it, but he's going, like, He's the one to carry on Oriana for his, for his Oriana game, and then he just goes like no damage. And eh. game one, they they definitely could have had us with the smolder that smolder pre nerfs because you just like hit late game even though we were gay ahead. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, Ar Arcadia was seemed like the most collected. Almost put together. Yeah, okay. understood. So we're pretty much in agreement that everyone, uh, where they lie in Piltover is is deserved. No one's had just maybe a rough go at it so far. We're thinking, yeah, for the yep. most part, I think. I think it's going to be like a pretty intense battle for like the bottom kind of like spots for like where the teams are actually going to end up mm -hmm. um, towards playoffs. Like I think. Blue Pearl Spire, DZG, Bloom, Shadow Cows are like all in the running for like that kind of fifth to third place. I don't yeah. think it's like locked whatsoever there. Yeah, there could be a lot of changes as as these teams, you know, start going head to head against one another. That's when you'll see the uh the gaps start to form. So definitely interesting to see how that ends up playing out. Um if that is all for Piltover side, we can jump over to Zahn. And in Zahn's positioning, we have Mint Spark at a 2 and 1 at the top of the pool. Looks like we actually have a lot more variants here. We have four teams at 2 and 1 and four teams at 1 and 2. Um, 
why do you think that there isn't a a clear front runner in this division? Was only uh, six points separated. <laughs> yeah, Zahn yeah. is a mess because of the <laughs> bump happen. ruling. Um, basically, um, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll speak. I'm the top laner for Mint Spark, so okay. I wasn't on this team for week one. Um, week one was the only team our team time our team has lost. Um, that they brought in a new, we brought in a new mid laner and top laner. Um, that's why I think we generally lost our week one. But then, like every other team, Zon's, I feel a much stronger division overall. I mean, Monkeys Emerald are sitting at one and two, and they're the new team, but they beat Omega Wooper, who is undefeated coming into this week, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just every team in this division, I feel like, has a shot at it, basically. Like, I wouldn't really count anyone out with maybe the exception of Paradox. Yeah. So, so Kaizo, or, or the, the team that got kicked from Zahn, was uh, removed because their, their mid laner had like a D3 account or something like that. Looking at that Monkey's Emerald... They, are, are, it might have happened again. I don't. I, I don't. I'm not gonna say any allegations, but the guy was carrying. Yeah, yeah. He did so well. Yeah, I was about to say those stats that guy put up are absolutely ridiculous. He did like 1700 damage a minute as Jace mid and went like 17 1 and 12 or something. It was yeah, insane. 77,000 damage <laughs> came on Jace mid, and I'm just like, what the <laughs> fuck is this guy smoking? We're just, if we ever face these guys, we're just like five banning him. We're talking yeah. about uh monkeys. Yeah, yeah. Act below. Yeah, Act below. Who's Act below? Oh, Act below. Yeah, yeah. yeah Act below yeah. used to be a top laner. So yeah, he used to I'd... be like diamond, right? And then he became Omega Wash for like a season. Uh, and then he became mid on this team. But yeah, if you expect anything that he's gonna play, it's gonna be playing like kind of things that you might want, you might see top because that's what he's comfortable with. I mean, he also absolutely destroyed a game as Ori as well. I think he had like, yeah, Ori is the game that they yeah. lost. Well, and him and Pekka have been playing for a long time together, from what yeah. I remember, right? They've both yeah, been in monkeys what, forever. Right. So probably it's probably been like four years. Yeah, yeah, point. I was about to say as long as I can remember, and I've been in the scene about that. So mm-hmm. it definitely makes sense that there's a lot of mid jungle synergies here that they're they're clearly working well with. Yeah. If there's uh-huh. anybody to ban on the team, like Pekka Paul is like a he's auto filled top laner, or no, Glad is playing top, right? Yeah, yeah Glad is playing top. top. Glad I is playing top. Yeah, so Pekka was listed as top, but Glad was top. yeah, yeah. And then they just they were deciding who's gonna play top and who's gonna play jungle, but Glad is actually playing top. There's no point of throwing bans at top lane. Um, jungle yeah. is Pekka Paul. I mean, if you really want to ban anything, but you know, Pekka's kind of washed as well. I feel like throwing bans at like. The worst players is a waste as well. It's it's funny how often it seems to happen to us, where like people will throw like three four bands mid lane and like what are you guys doing? You guys have no well, confidence. You're fucking like platinum rambled. To be to be fair, right? Your mid laner, uh, I believe you're talking about soccer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They play the most boring shit mid lane. To it's like <laughs> you wanna you wanna test him because if he's gonna if Swain's is up, Swain's is gonna be picked by him. Because that's like his most comfortable, most played champion. Then if he doesn't get swayed, he plays like Malzahar and doesn't want to interact with the lane. He plays basically auto push bullshit, and then yeah. um, <laughs> tries to let the entire rest of the like um, lanes carry, which happens every game. Yeah, it's like if you know what he's gonna do, or he's just gonna like auto no lane all of his opponents. Like don't don't even bother throwing bands at him. So, I'll be honest, yeah. I'd three ban him, just make see what he wants to play. Oh yeah, that that happened once. Uh he, he ended up like insta locking Cassidan for like the, <laughs> the, the first it. time in two years. <laughs> Ran it. So incident. fucking hard. <laughs> yeah. But, oh yeah, yeah, he 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 into that one. It, that's that's not why they ban him. Because it's like, yeah, let's see what else he plays. Oh look, he entered. Yeah, but he, he's picked up a lot of champions since then. We we made it so that like we can always round one him, and uh, he he has a champion pool of like four or greater that he can no lane on. Yeah. Um. um but yeah, just like other things like in Zon, 
just to, like get back like mints uh sorry uh final boss like impressed me i thought that that team was like gonna do terribly and now they're like sitting in second overall and are actually looking pretty good now that they have their main support back in um i think like every team in zon has a strength and a weakness but i feel like there's a lot more strengths in our division compared to built over yeah I think this Definitely. Monkey's Emerald team will eventually get to a top four spot in this though. Yeah, I think even though they're like we're starting with three points or whatever, I'm pretty sure they're gonna end like top four as well. But I have yeah, no I have idea where point. like who's gonna end where in this division. I think it's completely up in the air. Yeah. Well I guess we could move on to uh matchups. Starting with Piltover. First one, we got a pretty solid one of CG Forklift Certified versus DZG Arcadia. DZG turned it around. Uh, they lost the first couple of weeks. I think they had they went to like three games the first two weeks, and then they lost both weeks. But they won last week against uh, the Shadow Cows, which is a pretty solid win. Clown Gaming, obviously, they're undefeated. I would Those like are... to see. To win, uh, I think Cloud Gaming has has had a, an easy time of it so far. Uh, I don't yeah, know, we'll see. I, outside of their matchup against Spire, they have played the two bottom teams in the division. Um, so yeah, this this very well could be a case where they just haven't been fully challenged. Yeah, I would say I personally think that Clown's still gonna take it. I think they're gonna win two one. I think DZG is gonna make it really close, but I don't have enough faith in them to say that they're actually going to be able to take the series. DCG has DZG gone to three games every series so far, so... Yeah, they just... They're getting their full money's worth playing. I'll <laughs> yeah. say 2-1 DZG. They're on the up. I'm, I'm up with them. <laughs> Fantastic. Alright, let's go to the next matchup. It's actually... So, Lotus Crypt... They're actually withdrawing from the league. Uh, um, they, they were nice guys. They were nice guys. I, I yeah. Remember. But, you know, as a roster that is very, like, they have a very big competitive mindset. When you start 0 3, they're not going to want to play anymore, right? Yeah. I kind of touched base on this in Platinum, but they had so many roster issues. Like, they couldn't get a consistent top laner. One of their players was playing from a hotel laptop. Um, and then yeah, they decided that it's best for them to uh, <laughs> withdraw. Uh, I Props to them. We had two e subs. They gave us our bands back because they're like, "Hey, that that's the way it should be," and uh, just just props for that. And then uh, you know, the team that's replacing them is actually Genex's team. Hey, how's it going? Oh, hello. Uh, we we are uh, overtaking. Uh, we're gonna try to make a run at it, right? Uh, we're we're got a some older, older, recently promoted players. Let's say that. Um, so we're we're looking at everything as an opportunity in this division. That's for sure. Yeah, the roster should be pretty solid once their top laner does come back. Yeah. <laughs> From cool yeah. Down. Yeah, top lane is on cooldown right now, so um, it it will be interesting when uh, our top laner is able to come. I see that I mean, some people are asking who yeah. is on our roster. Would you uh, like? Can we I? Can, we can go. I, yeah, we can go ahead and tell them. Yeah, I can take ahead. that. So <clears throat> our top laner for this week is going to be Dobbs, uh, but going forward, uh, our top laner is going to be Rutledge. Oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> Rutledge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we. I thought it was interesting when we were uh, skimming through things late last night and saw that he was looking for a team. And, of course, you don't not reach out to uh, Rutledge in that situation. Um, and then we have Black Eyed Peas in the jungle what who up? is producing this. Um, JJH in mid, myself in AD Carry, and Righteous will be our support. Um, so it's not, not, a, not a terrible Ember roster. We'll see how we stack up. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I think yeah. you guys have a decent shot. You're playing like 
a lot of the teams they're like directly competing with you in playoffs and yeah so, so we we are i guess they already lost like the three best teams looking at this yeah. so three, potentially three uh teams. could got a run for us looking and looking forward yeah, to it you guys pretty much would need to there's a chance at three and four you guys can make it but at four and three is what you really need yeah you gotta you gotta try to win yeah. out so every week's yeah. gonna be important and we're, we're gonna play it like it is so we'll see how it goes that's all we can do yeah but uh I guess it's hard to talk about the the matchup right there because uh yeah we have we we see what shadow kills has done <laughs> but they, there's nothing to really base it up against right we're uh yeah no expectations is gonna did be lose there. last week right they're sitting at one and two um i think they're a pretty average team um definitely some things to work on i think to, uh, tuesday would be a good test um definitely better than playing against low script i think low script was you know Slightly on the weaker side, but uh, I think this matchup this uh, on Tuesday will determine if Shadow Cows is actually one of the top four teams built over. Right. For the next matchup, we got the I and Team versus Omega Gaming Show Shakers. Also, can you guys get a goddamn logo? Uh, yeah, I asked our all of our team members, and we're just like, "Do you want to make it?" I don't know. <laughs> if you but, throw Pop for ten dollars, she'll make a logo for you. Uh, I'll, I'll look into it. Uh, it was it was pretty but, much just a group of five guys who were just like I don't know, let's try it. But it's gonna be a two zero for us. Not not even close. Yeah, uh, that Omega Gaming Soda Shakers team is uh, not good. I... They're here to have fun. Yeah, exactly. They're here to yeah, like they grow know and get Kratos better as players. Yeah, Kuro's throwing out every champion on in the League of Legends game at support at some point. Yeah, I don't know. Their, their, their mid laner plays Bygar. That's kind of annoying, but like we're just gonna ban it. Sorry. And uh, damn, leaking the strats already. Yeah, I'll leak them. <laughs> leaking we don't, strats. We don't need any strats. <laughs> <Leaking> the strats. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, there's no reason to go against the Ion team, right? They've already played against uh, stronger sides that they've beat. Uh, so I feel like this will be uh, a pretty a pretty early night for them, if you will. <laughs> All right, next up, Blue Abyss versus Blue uh, Pearl Spire. This should probably be a pretty good match. This is the game of the week for me. I think I haven't played against either team, so... Yeah, this one on paper, both are like really solid rosters from what I can tell. Um and I I think it's it's gonna be a lot closer. I'm gonna give it to Spire. I think Islamic is just an insane jungler from what I've seen. Um and that they're my guess. I, I'm gonna say two one um Spire. Uh yeah, I am really not high on blue gaming at this i i'm the writer for the league um and i predicted that team was going to finish seventh <laughs> just um they've, they've been exceeding expectations yeah they've been exceeding my expectations anyway they have like a lot of people on that team who are like <coughs> off rolling or going into like holes that they hadn't played in a couple of seasons kind of thing so i am not going to predict them the win i think blue pearl spiral will take it i like that roster i think they're solid um, I feel like once you start like pinching certain players on that team on Bloom Gaming, that they might have some trouble. So, I think Blue Pearl Spire is going to take it 2-0. 2-0, not even close. Nice. nice. Alright, let's go head over to Zahn and, uh, you know, with this, how close Zahn is. Um, all these matchups should be kind of interesting. First one's gonna be Omega Whooper versus Paradox, and Paradox, their only win is off the comp ruling. Yeah, we uh we played them last week. Um, they're gonna have some struggles, I think, moving forward. Um, they die a lot and go for the play whenever possible when they sometimes shouldn't be. Their uh, Zeri Yumi lane tried to dive our ADC duo three times last week. 
So I respect it. <laughs> yeah. The funny, <laughs> the funny part is that they were the actually I think the only team that actually took a game off the Dorado Gaming Kappa roster. Yeah, they did. All right. I... But then lost to everyone else. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, Whooper's good, and I think they're gonna two up. Yeah, I think I think Whooper is just more experienced, right? I mean, I think the Whooper is definitely gonna take this one. I'll also Here's say two up. Whooper Wednesday. Are are Whooper the guys who spam Whooper Wednesdays in chat? Because I like they these are. guys. Yes. So it's not just Whooper league. guys anymore, but yeah. Um, the, yep. It originally came because they had a they one of their game days was on Wednesday, and they would say it's Whooper Wednesday, and now it's just a thing. Oh, they got my vote. That everyone says. <laughs> All right, let's head over to the next matchup. That's gonna be Kanu with GG versus uh, Monkey's Emerald. A lot of shit talk oh, happening and behind the scenes in this one, boy. I'll tell you, <laughs> the condo is everywhere because Glada uh, is a long time uh, jungler for Conduit. He's filling in top for the Monkeys team, going up against CZI. It's like uh, two young men bantering back and forth, barking at each other. Uh, and I gotta back so, up my boy Glada. You know, junglers gotta defend each other. Sorry, genetic. Yeah, I. <laughs> If Glada doesn't end top, I think Monkeys has a has a solid chance of winning. But man, that's hard to do against CZI. And especially if they early pick like uh tankier picks for Glada, who's not a top main. It, it could get ugly real fast. I think a lot of it comes down to like how if the monkeys mid laner can repeat his performance from last week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Yo, Navi is beating the shit out of Pain right now. I know. I'm so uh, happy. I did not want Pain to. Lose. I, I wanted Navi to move CS on. CSGO? Yeah. No, CS2. Dummy. Hey, I'm so Navi sad Navi Liquid didn't even make it to the major, man. <laughs> but that's good for kind of. G- that's going to be a good match. I, I think yeah. uh, Kado would definitely. If they lose this one, they fall to one of three. Yeah, yeah, which difficult. is crazy because they've been putting in so much effort, and it's something's not something's not fully clicking with them. I know, I know that for yeah. a fact. So we'll we'll see how they're lucky that up. I'm, I'm back pretty sure how the Zon shaping up the a three and four team will probably get in based on points on yeah. fourth seed, but um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be pretty interesting. Next match is Mint Spark. Versus Mint OTS. What does OTS stand for? Otters? I think it's Otters or something. I like the Oats. I think it's Oats. With the Oats. The Oats. The yeah, the, the Oats. It's the Mint Oats, like Otters. All right. Uh, this is going to be the Civil War for the Mint teams. Yeah. Both teams I'm are pretty solid. I'm obviously going to back our own team, Spark. Um, as biased, yeah, it's bias. bias, caster bias, everything, writer bias. Um, we're a better team. We're all in the top twenty-five of players. Right. We're four and zero oh since we're all on it. Um, we will actually go to late game or try and end the game early. And all Ots does is scale and play stuff like Corky. I like Ots, so I'm gonna go with Ots. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big Ots guy. <laughs> Otter Team Six is what it stands for. That's okay. That's fucking cool. Otter Team Six. That's what oh. someone put in chat. That's that makes uh, sense. hey, look, Otter Team Six. That sounds hey, real official. Get it? Like Seal Team yeah. Six? <laughs> yeah, Seal Team might, Six. Otter Team Six. Why is there only top gap them? But they name gap you. <laughs> they did why, name okay. gap you guys. So they're Otter Team Six, but I only see five otters on their logo. The well, the six ones behind you right now, living in your walls, yeah. really spooky. <laughs> oh. With the <laughs> with with, with, with the to, fish waiting waiting till I go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I'm just waiting for you to go to sleep. Uh, in all seriousness, though, man, all these matchups on Zon's side are just they're so close, right? It's so hard to yeah. determine um who it, who's going to win, but I I. 
I'm going to say odds just because we have bias on the other side. You know, it just makes sense. I'm biased towards otters. So that's what it is. This should be a good match. Uh, and then the last one is Horizon Gaming versus Final Boss Esports. Also a good match. Yeah, like Second Super versus close. fifth. They're, they're, you would think it's a bigger gap, but five and three versus three and four in terms of games. That's not that far off. Yeah, it's uh, pretty close. They're, they're only three points away. It's literally the difference of winning one more game to win the series is pretty much the difference right there. I don't recognize uh, the players on either of these teams, to be honest. Uh, so I am fully in the dark on this one. Well, Horizon Gaming did change up their roster last week. Yeah, they are. Uh, um, there is some not happy people about that in their general chat. They are fighting about it a lot. <laughs> With that being said, I will be rooting for Final Boss. I, I, I think it's safe to put my chips in the Final Boss bucket this week. Yeah, uh, uh, it's definitely going to be. It's definitely going to be. It's another thing where okay, so we can see a lot of things happening, right? We can see a few upsets, and then we see every team being two and two, with the exception of like Mint Spark and Mint OTS, because one of them is going to be uh, three and one, no matter what. Um, and if we see uh, like a division start to form in Zon, it's going to be this week because of how many teams could drop to one and three. Um, and how many teams will go to three and one, and that'll put a two game pretty much gap between a playoff spot and not a playoff spot or two series gap. Yeah, um, I think final boss is going to take it over Horizon. Um, I don't really believe in Horizon very much after playing them. Uh, yeah. I think also, like, blowing up your bot lane when they were, you know, you don't know all the reasons behind it and stuff, but it was not a good luck when they were probably performing the best on your team. Have you guys heard about Twitch Prime? <laughs> yeah, everyone right now should absolutely check that purple button, <laughs> see if you have a free Twitch Prime. I need to see at least five of them, or I'm going to be really upset. So please check your Twitch Primes, ladies and gentlemen. This cost me at least $3 being here all this time on a Sunday after church. And I put five in a collection plate. Is so that how much you worth your Sunday. time? Is... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm an or <laughs> donor. Go but... I did not go to church. Hey, hey, okay, well, thank you so much. I did go to church. What the hell? No, no you didn't. I did go you to church, comma, log? what the hell? <laughs> what a tennis log. Church church doesn't have a tennis log. Yeah, huh? Do you gotta raise your hand cool. and everything? Present. <laughs> I think you went to like elementary school or something. A presente. Presente. That's a fallen reference. Presente. Good job. Good job, Janice. You got hey, one. We got one. We got one. Hey. I asked for five, we got one. That's about normal for my life. I ask for most of the requirement now. Mine's not up until five new subs every week. Mine's not up until April fifth. <laughs> my bad, guys. Hey, that's two days after my birthday. Hey, man, happy birthday soon. Oh, thank you, thank you. That's right. closing thoughts for me. It's the rise of uh, conduit. The Dude, rise. Of conduit. That's what I'm saying. GG. They're all Which conduit. Up. New conduit. No, team? no, 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 no. New conduit team. No, I say GG. I literally said I'm backing though. Glad up this week, so I can't say GG. No, dude, you can't back back Glada. He's a monkey now. A literal monkey. Yeah. Uh-huh. Actually a monkey emerald. An yeah, emerald an, monkey. An emerald monkey. Well, Glad is also a jungle. So. About, which logo do you guys like better for the monkeys? The old one or the new one? Dude, I'm a like I'm a traditionalist. I loved those little fake bananas on the side they had. Man, I agree. that old I monkeys logo slapped. Yeah, yeah. 
I agree. That that old monkeys logo just had so much like uh, nostalgia to it. Mm-hmm. It looks so bad, but so good at the same time. And that's how Little Monkeys. I mean, Little Monkeys been be over like since it was actually a thing. So five, five and a half years ago. But so that is it for Emerald Storm. Thank you for joining, Josh. Thank you for joining. It was fun. Good luck to your uh, look this week. Um, but yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks. But we're now ready for be a little diamond. We've got guest Idris and is it Idris or Idris? Uh, Idris, but yeah, that, that works too. What's up? Yeah. And then we have Mo or Mui. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Just woke up not too long ago. I thought it was like late. Mm, it is pretty asleep. late. I want to go take a nap, so. That's good. Anyway, this so far in Diamond Standings, we got TTM, we got Khan, mm. uh, Brad Bolster Gaming, Akuma, Elysium, We Love Solbert, Art of War, and then P Team. I'm pretty sure there's a big division that's going to form eventually um, between the top six and the mm-hmm. bottom two. Um, I mean, it's already formed. But I, I'm thinking it's pretty much locked. But if you guys had to change the power rankings uh, based on the standings, how would you do it? Um, let me go check the standings. Okay, so I'll take my team out for bias, obviously. Um, but I think 7th, 8th will always be out of what P team. Because like, those are like Emma players, I'm not going to lie to you. Right, yeah. they're like, uh, and I don't know, but I think I don't think Connie Esports is human, by the way. Like, this Connie Esports roster is like not real, but so is like Sutek, but they're a little bit better. So, I think Connie Esports and uh, we love Solbert team is like 5 4 because I don't think Chelsea is a real jungler. I think Solbert's just like Emma player, like Emma EDC at least. And then, who you guys lose to? I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, 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 no. I bet Buster. So, and um, obviously, I I put like Elysium and Bad Bolster near each other, but Elysium last is kind of shit. I'm not lying to you. Like I put Madrid and like the mid <laughs> is okay. I think I said. I mean, the top is okay too. But I think that's that's is pretty shit. You're talking a um, lot of shit for being a team that's four and four in games yeah, for. Just really don't talk to me. <laughs> it's regular season. I'm having my fun. Just rolling the dice, hey man. Talk, to, talk to me playoffs. True. And then I think I mean I think the suit like the to the min team is like at least top three. Like uh, I don't know how I'm gonna lie to you, but I can whatever they're doing it's working. And this Bolter guy is like a, an absolute pig top lane. So who knows? Maybe something will happen, but. Uh, I think Bad Boss is like three and four, two, two, two to four. But oh. I think for sure, like we love Solbu and Khan or Elysium is like five, five for four. That's five for six. But seven eight will always be P team. And then that uh, Ottawa. All right. What about you, Idris? 
Uh, yeah, so I have, um, I'm not sure if I have the exact same thing. I'd say, like, bottom two is probably P-Team and Art of War. Uh, I That's imagine P-Team, you know, they're just, uh, you know, they are, like Mui said, an Emerald team. Uh, I respect them, you know, they're coming up here. Maybe they can, like, look to, like, win a series, surprise someone. Art of War, I don't know much about. They just seem, like, a bit higher ranked. Um, after that, For I'd say... Sure, Art of War did have a couple good games, like, yeah. competitive games. So, mm -hmm. if we had to just like um distinguish between seven and eight i'm pretty sure art of war is probably much better than p team mm -hmm. okay fair enough yeah because i know <coughs> p team they are like like looked at their last series it was like 18 minutes and 22 minutes um <laughs> yeah against ttm tethys uh i would say speaking of ttm tethys i don't know i'd put them like okay they're above i think above we love solbert i'd say yeah. that those guys are probably six but it's also hard to say i think brad boster is like a wild card like they're able to beat akuma 2-0 um they lost to us 0-2. I think they have, like, a very strong early game. They have just a variable mm -hmm. performance, so we'll see a lot of that out of them. I think, like, Akuma is also pretty inconsistent, but I put them near the top. I think TTM Tethys is actually, like, I wouldn't call them frauds, but they're, like, 3-0 is a little <laughs> fake because <laughs> yeah. they played the two bottom teams. Yeah. Um, Didn't they like, not go 2-1 against Wheel of Solbert as well? Yeah, they went 2-1 against Wheel of Solbert. I don't know if, how good Wheel of Solbert is. They're, like, decent as well, I think. Um I don't know when we play them. We play TTM Tethys next, so I think we're yeah. going to give them their first loss. Let's uh, see what's the stream game going to be. It's either be that one or Brad Bolster game in Khan. Yeah. <coughs> and then I think Khan is like solid. I don't think they're quite as good as like, I think like we probably could have won. We kind of like lost our focus after we won game one. We kind of made like a lot of bad draft decisions and game decisions, but I think we could have one in another world i think they're pretty solid overall but they're like a step down like a, i think a significant step down from the connie sports that one last split that that roster was like oh pretty i think completely five different players um so yeah i, I would say like i guess that's like a rough estimate of where i put the teams makes sense all right let's go ahead and talk about the matchups we've got four matchups obviously uh, first one's gonna be Wheel of Solbert versus Akuma. Uh, I'll let Mui start with that one. You bet. I mean, Mui, you guys better win this week, or you're gonna you're gonna take yeah, a I'm lot kind of, of shit. Yeah, that is true. I have to focus up next. It's okay. I won't fall asleep in lane this time. Um, what what is that last statement? Because I know Chelsea's on it and I Solbert's on it, but who are the other? I think okay. Night Ravens top. I don't oh, know. Oh, okay. Are... This is the fucking flat player from like last bit, like the one that like is Emerald. <coughs> Um, okay, this guy's not real, by the way. Wasn't Earl King a diamond player? Yeah, but no, but he, he he won an emerald split or something. I I, I don't know, something emerald. But, but he's like I don't know. He 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 lost to um, what was that Dota mid laner called? The uh. Yo, Earl King is diamond three right now. Bro, everyone's fucking LP inflated. I'm negative win the emerald too. Like who cares? Like it doesn't matter. Like he, I let you live the getting a little rank defense. Okay, listen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guys, guys, listen. Why are you so defensive right now? I'm defensive, but like, yeah, let's this, go, this I'm go check your account real quick. <laughs> but I'm negative win rate. I think I, I think I just went like 2 of 15. Emerald 2, 47% win rate. God dang, I'm you cooked. suck. What is this inting you did on this Hecarim jungle game? No, no, go, go, go to the Yasuo game. Go to the most. Bannable question game. mark? The, the 1 of 15. 19 one. and 6. Alright, let's check damage. No, 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 on the, this one. no, no, the other Yasuo game before that. 1 of 15? Oh, yeah, that's Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't get that play. <laughs> uh, okay. Um. But I mean, Damn. I think this team. I think the top laner is like just getting it fisted by two. Dude, teams. you need to stop playing Graves. Yeah, that's true. I I noticed that. And then I think I think the support. Like, sorry, the support. Not I think quality play is like the only way. Like, if they step in, win, then they have a chance maybe. But I think Solbo off Kogma is like inhuman. I think Chelsea's just like a pig jungler. Like, if you invade it two times, her mental's gone, and like the entire team just loses. And I think Earl King just is just mechanically like, like disabled. But he, That's he plays a nice like way to put it. pretty well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he's uh, a full tier higher than you. <laughs> yeah, he's he ended up higher than me. Yeah, I I, I don't want to talk about it, guys. Like this is. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Let's not talk about it. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could go ahead and put my prediction there before we move on to the next one for sure. I think. <laughs> I mean, I'll say it's a two-one, probably Akuma favored. I don't know. Yeah. That much about um Fulbert. They like they look like they have like some strong pieces here and there. I don't know if it like how well it comes together. 
Um, so they don't play outside of just playing in the league, right? They so they don't practice yeah, it's at just all. Like this league, mm-hmm. they show up and play. And I swear to God, if they if they practice just a little bit, they would be probably two one right now because they lost a few games that are, that went to the third game. Mm-hmm. Um, Most they lose, so, they lost to TTM and someone else. Con. Con. I will okay. say, guys, we're never gonna two our team. So say that much. Respect. Yeah, this is, it's definitely a team that I think had higher potential than their record shows. Is the fact that they're mm. not gonna practice. Yeah, that yeah, was like a practice. You end up relying that, on like an that, individual yeah. player to just. That was that team last season. Last split. Sorry. Yeah. And then the... it's it's just crazy how much a little bit of practice goes. That's and then you lose to Mr. Cats Black in playoffs. Like, and then Mr. Know. Cats Black. Yeah, that's not. I, but they sub out the entire roster like. <laughs> Came for like <laughs> how am I supposed to scout against that? <laughs> I fucking. All right, next matchup is gonna be P team versus Art of War Sport Esports, and this is finally a week one of these teams is gonna win. Art of War is winning. This P team is gonna like... be uh, the defining matchup between seven and eight. Yeah, like Art of War winning. We'll see. We'll see if like P team like if there is like if this is supposedly like the seventh versus eighth, then maybe they can give a bit of a closer fight. But yeah. yeah. If it's and... a 2-0 Art of War, I'm pretty sure P-Team's not winning a game this season. <laughs> yeah, most likely, if that happens. But <laughs> we'll see. I mean, I don't know. Art of War, they've, they've, you said they've had some close games, so the potential for them to have, like, I thought they did. Suck up a upset could be, like, more than... It looks like Akuma dropped a game to Art of War, okay? Yeah, I told you, I never so, told yeah, a team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that yeah, their well, only I... Is that their only win? Yeah, it's only their only win, right? I, I guess we could predict like a Art of War 2 0. Mm, I think they'll throw. <coughs> Maybe. It, it's, things, I think Art of War will like throw a game, but I think P Team is just like so like. Hmm, what's, what's the word here? How, how do I put it nicely? Outclassed. Maybe. Yeah. Why are you worried about being nice now? <laughs> you've been talking That's shit this true. whole time what do you mean be nice he's talking shit he's talking shit against he, he doesn't want to put p team down okay, yeah. oh, nice people. they do they do kind of logo gap the rest of the league no cap that is they true do. if this was a logo, logo competition they'd win for yeah sure. their ST yeah. logo that, that logo is pretty sick i like that there's five piece in the pod yeah, yeah. yeah. and i don't know if it matters but i'm gonna vote peas for sure <laughs> I would have wanted on the record. Mm-hmm. P's 2 0 because I gotta root for P's, man. There's no way I don't. Me me as well. I think I think they'll maybe win a game. Like one. One. That's it. I'm rooting for the double FF. <laughs> okay. How long do you think the games will last though? Uh over under twenty five average. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Next matchup, we got Elysium Dawn versus TTM Tethys. <laughs> yeah, if they were still ID, I would say ID two O as I've typed like after every week. But since they're not, uh-huh. uh, I'm gonna say Elysium two O. We're gonna focus up, and we'll just win. Nice. What about if you, you movie? If you okay, listen. If this guy loses to Sutek, he's gonna get like a. Like a six-page paragraph, so you better not. <laughs> like, like, losing to Sutek Volta is just like ah, I don't know. Just quit League of Legends at that point. You know, we'll ban nice. Kane. We'll ban Garen. Okay, but why ban Kane? It, it, literally, every single Kane player does the same fucking stupid Raptor stuff. Yeah, they do, but and you know, always Kane like randomly pilots itself sometimes. You know, like Kane is like I agree, Kane players. Yeah. You know, they how, how do you think he fucking do, hit D1? Like, he like randomly nothing, got a good Raptor but... stuff. <laughs> Like hello, you know, like like what 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 are you after? You get a free win. That's true, but you know you could just ban it, and you That's get an even freer win. But no, I I don't think it'll be like a free win. I think Not, they'll probably think give they us have... a fight. I think overall they they have like some good players and stuff. Yeah, I think like it's a team you pretty much have to focus up against, and if you do that, you can like expose them. Yeah, and win. Like, I don't think the I think the ADC is okay, and I I don't know who this midlaner is so. I mean, this is pretty much their first real test, right? Actually, no, their first real test, I would still say it's... Was it 
Wheel of yeah, Silver. They played okay, Wheel but, that, but that seems not real, Billy. So that's not fair. What is real? But I don't what know. What is real? <laughs> All right. Me. Last matchup is going to be Brad Bolster Gaming versus Con Esports. Con. Do you want? Yeah, I would. You know, I think Brad Bolster might be a little bit underrated of their uh... potential. Slow. I think so too. I mean, we two owed them, but like, I felt like um, like the first game we played against them, we were like down zero to ten in kills or something crazy <laughs> like that. But the problem is like their team fighting wasn't great. Like we were just able yeah. to like find a good team fight, and then from there we were able to start taking over the game again. But um, we we'd also scrimmed them uh yeah. unknowingly without even knowing they were in BOL like just the week before. Yeah. They were like listed as another team, and we scrimmed them, and I had the same feeling like we won, but like. I, I could feel like there's potential with the team. So I think they could always like win any individual game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll I'll yeah. I'll break this down. I think okay. I think this LL Cool J's guy, by the way, he is like uh what's the word? Do you know those people who have like like pennies on the ground and they like hoard it all? Like uh, that's like him. Like he'll do anything to not use anything, right? He's like very conservative and then He's a miser. Uh, right. So this mid jungle exactly what you mean. <laughs> Yeah, great. <laughs> this so he'll save Flash for next game. Yeah, 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 essentially, right? But like, uh, the point is, he's like, he's, he's like very conservative. And this jungler is like kindred player, so he, he he's just gonna play for what makes his jungler win, right? But not makes him lose. And then the thing with Wasteful is like, I think he's a good like player mechanically, but like, and his like laning, he's like kind of like, like like his brain is like not working in lane. I'm not my lady, guys. Like, and then the enemy jungler, his pathing is. Like it's not really uh so optimal like, like this guy every single game three camps into mid three camps into mid three camps into mid every single game, right? And this jungle is actually like enemy like tiny push jungle is actually like, pretty good and it's really good pathing especially like a like a, um a kindred player. So I think like the mid jungle, it's just like it's just jungle gap right. So then the mid can't play. So as like good as as Wasteful is mechanically in a two v two, I think his jungle is just like so like dumb that's like he can just play towards his bot lane. It'll be interesting to see if, like, let's say Elysium wins and then Brad Bolster wins, knocks down two other yeah, series teams. Yeah, I, I just don't um, think... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, if that happens, I mean, you now see a few teams that are just tied for at 3-1, yeah. probably, and then a few teams at 2-2. Two and two. I just think I like this, this mid laner is so conservative that he'll literally, like, lose his game. Uh, to make sure like no one else gets ahead, and then that's like the whole like play style of this mid jungle, is that it's just like flip every fight from a skirmish, right? This guy won't do that, so then they can just win through the bot. Brad Walsh has yet to go to a game three, so you know whoever wins that's game true. one, they're gonna win game two as well. Yeah. All right, but that is all for Diamond. Thank you for joining me, and uh, I hope you have a good rest of your day and good luck in your games this week. All right. Yeah. Thanks for having us. All right, welcome back. Uh, we do not have any guests for Masters. The guest I contacted, he messaged me this morning. It was like, I'm out, I'm out of town until Monday. I'm like, okay, so why the hell did you try to be on a Sunday at Otter Talk? Well, he was but, hoping you'd but, rearrange it for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So reschedule Otter Talk. Yeah. Wait a minute. Why is this not? not update oh wait no i forgot there's biases never mind um so for masters we're gonna start with demacia and i know you're a big fanatic of uh masters genetics and you've been researching mm-hmm. like the mm-hmm. teams for the last few weeks this is true. 
Yeah, I, but I've so been, far the uh, standings really stunning it. is DG sticks at one. Omega Akuma pairing knives, terrible name, at second. Third is Goofy Goobers. Fourth, Con Esports. Fifth, the Fraud Team. Sixth, Crabs Radiant. And seventh, Dorado Gaming Beta. And Noxus, we have Lane Zero Maelstrom, uh, number one. Dorado Gaming Gamma, two. Death Cards at three. Nameless Tritium at four. And Leash Dog at five. BCS Demolishers at six. And USAE Academy at seven. All right, genetics. Demasi. Demasi it is. It's actually pretty interesting. All right. Because we have some good teams. Last week, I believe Goofy Goobers took down Omega Gaming um, in a two-game series. Well, I know they took them down. But that was the second and third team. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's really impressive. I really think uh, you said that was Omega and, and Goofy Goobers, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think for the difference that series was King Coney. Um, I think King Coney really popped off uh in the Omega gaming series. I swear to God. Um, <laughs> and, and and really, I mean, he had a song, solid jungle game, but really, it was it was King Coney who really popped off. And I think talking about King Coney on Goofy Goobers, or no? No. Never mind. No, on oh, no. Gaming. Oh, no, Omega. Okay. Yeah. They're... So on death cards, they had a player named King Coney as well. Oh man. But right force his name changed. <laughs> so I don't know who King Coney exactly is, but King uh... Coney's the top laner. The actual top laner is the legit King Coney. Okay, so we're gonna go with him being the goat, yeah. and everyone else is like, uh... yeah, but Goofy Goobers won that matchup. Well, that's and and to be honest, it's because. Omega's really trying to find their identity, right? We're really trying to determine who we are as people. We can't all be King Coney, is what I'm trying to say. I mean, sitting at number so one, have... DCG sticks. They went to three games, all three series so far. Sitting at three, no, six, and three games as well. Yeah, and I think that's a testament, right, to how Masters players think and, and you know, even even probably the, the lower tier versions of them, they still are able to find win conditions against each other, right? Um, it should be, theoretically. Yeah, but it is it is uh, quite interesting. I don't necessarily think... I, I would not say DZG are frauds by any uh, right, that's sense the frauds. of the word, right? Uh, because they... I just think that's more of a testament to the competition they're up against. Yeah. I mean, and for... Top four make it playoffs. So at the cutoff, we have Con Esports and the Fraud Team. Um, Fraud Team lost to DG last week. Con, I believe they had their bye last. I forget. No, Dorado Gaming Beta had their bye. The Crabs Radiant uh, played Con. They reschedule. Con won that one. Was it three games? Yeah, so last week Con won in three games. Over the fraud team. No, over Crabs Radio. Oh, okay, over Crabs Radio. Okay. Yeah, and I think uh it's gonna come down to because top four make playoffs in this, if, correct? Yeah, yeah. The more more teams are in than out, so as long as you're beating the the people kind of around you in terms of standings, you'll end up kind of getting in there and can play dark horse. Uh, yeah, right. Because you definitely need to make sure you are beating the teams around you, though. So grabs rating and dropping that makes it tough, and and good on Con for getting picking that one up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Dorado Gaming Beta, they're off the buy. Um, they lost the first two weeks. Um, I know one of them was against DZG. I think that was in week one. And then they lost to uh, Omega Gaming. So they played the top two teams in the division, theoretically. Oh, well, one through three. Mm -hmm. um, they played two of those teams. So, you know, you kind of expect a, a 0 2 record. But. It's all uphill from now, is that, you know, 
their yeah. last theoretically uh their last tough matchup between Goofa Goobers. Um and so I mean if they win that one or even if they don't win that one, they just beat everyone else and they go three and three, I think they'll make it playoffs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some of these things and it's it's difficult, right? Sometimes you have a trial by fire moment where you uh you have really hard series early on. Um, if you do get these early bye weeks, though, it helps you kind of determine what's going on and fix it during the bye week. Uh, yeah. I know that's how it was when uh, we used to play in in those seven league, seven team leagues, right? Yeah. Um, you should have to adjust yourself. So it is and, all ups for those teams who play those hard teams. In Noxus, though, slightly different is with Lane Zero Maelstrom being perfect they are undefeated in game score and series score so they're sitting comfortably at number one gamma sitting at two and oh um they did have a buy um death cards after that nameless leash dog i this is the interesting because i feel like there's more in terms of who you feel like it's going to get in um i feel like the top three is pretty much secured uh going to go into playoffs lane zero dorado and death cards Mm-hmm. Um, nameless and possibly BCS demolishers, I feel like are going to contest that for. Yeah, they have the. I I can't see the strength of schedule at the moment of who they played well, so far. So BCS demolishers, they played against Lane Zero and Dorado, week one and week two. Mm-hmm. Um, week three they had to buy. So they played against two really tough opponents. I think it's basically what happened with the uh, Dorado Gaming Beta is that they played the strongest opponents. Next week they actually play Death Cards, who's three in the division, and then their uh, schedule just gets a lot easier. So they're playing the best teams in the division theoretically in the first few weeks. Um, I would argue they're... that's how you want your split to go, right? Where you're getting all your tough matches out, and you're, while you're figuring things out. That way, towards the back well, half, you can... Or you want your easier ones so you could be ready for the tough ones. <laughs> ah, they, that's not the fun way to get in there. Because then you yeah. really have to ramp up every game to make sure you're making that playoff spot. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I feel like they have a, a chance to, you know, make it in the playoffs. They just gotta, you know, settle down. They did take a game off, and that was against Dorado, Game & Gamma, so they have, yeah. they have potential. I think I think if they are playing Death Guards this upcoming week, right? They definitely need to make sure they try to get a win there, just because you you would hate to go into the last three weeks zero and three and trying to to squeak into playoffs off of that. Mm-hmm. Um, although it's gonna be a hard a hard road. They took one off of Dorado. There's no reason they can't take a series off of Death Guards. Yep. And let's just go ahead and talk about the schedule. Um, since mm-hmm. we're already getting to that topic. Uh, in Demacia, we got the Crabs Radiant versus DGG Sticks. I feel like this is a big turning point. That if Crabs Radiant can, you know, take a game or two and award them win the series against DGG Sticks, uh, they're back in the potential of making the playoffs. They did start pretty rough because they had a weird uh, story. Is you know, this team originally was an ID team, and then owner of the team just randomly sold it off to another team and i get a message like yeah we just sold a spot off i'm like what do you mean <laughs> mm, okay <laughs> and they sent me a roster and half like half the people weren't eligible oh good and then yeah now they're pretty much settling down um they kept one of the players uh so you know with a couple of weeks by after you know the roster shake up they might be able to settle down. They did put up a good fight against Khan. They couldn't come um, come out with a win, but they still have a, a few games to go. I mean, they had their bye, so I think you know we haven't really seen the potential of this team, but I think it could be pretty saucy. Yeah, and it is one of those things, right? They've already taken, it, uh, and I'm guessing it's the same roster who's taken the two games, or it's not. It's different. Group. Mm-hmm. It's. Wait, you said the same roster or what? So the Crabs Radiant roster, they're currently two and four it's in games. Okay. It's different. So yeah. they're kind of uh they're kinda of coming in here 
as a as an unknown and if easy no no I, it's the same rosters since the beginning of the split so they sold it like at week one where they had a buy so oh okay so yeah the same team so played two yeah. and four so yeah they've got they've gotten some wins so you know they can't they know they can win yeah. i think that's what the most interesting thing about this division is is they don't have a team who hasn't won a single game yeah um, they've lost to the fraud team at uh in a week two also, remind me to fix this goddamn schedule. Uh, but yeah, so the Crabs Radiant uh, lost to the Fry team week two, and then they lost to uh, Con last week. Both three game series. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you take the first two weeks as, as your learning weeks, but you're still competing, and you figure out your play style with each other, and mm-hmm. now you're, you're taking on the big dog, so you have to make sure all your ducks are in a row. And since yeah. DZG is accustomed to going to three game series, I'm gonna say it's a three game series. <laughs> yeah, both teams have not gone to only two games yet. They've all been three games, so you know, three games is pretty much a pretty solid bit. Um, I think DZG is still gonna take this one. I think overall they they're pretty strong mm-hmm. off the back of Cuz, who did hit Challenger earlier in this in the year. Um, awesome. but uh, I'm pretty sure they lost a crap ton of LP. Yeah. Eh, they were now the Grandmaster. Now they're... I think they lost... Oh, they're at 539 now. Damn. That's impressive hey. to lose 200 LP in about a week and a half. Hey, hey, listen. I do it all the time. I do it all the time. <laughs> it just doesn't say LP for me. It's just like, you know, Emerald 1 to Emerald 4. Yeah, but, tune yeah. into It's Genetics on Twitch in the morning sometimes to see some real League of Legends gameplay. No, no, that's not correct. Does uh, he actually stream? <laughs> no, it's, no, I don't. I do not. Please do not click my name. Um. Mm. Anyways. So, I yeah, I think DZG sticks as well. I was going to take this one. 2-1, uh, two, two, one, though. 2-1, though. They're going to go. Two, they're going to play their games out. I'll right. make sure Next you get your up, money here. We got Dorado getting beta versus Connie Esports, and this is, has to be the turning point of beta. Um, Connie Esports team definitely not looking as strong as like previous seasons or like last season where the Con team just looked unbeatable. Um, beta sitting at 0 2, Con at 1. This is pretty big game for both these teams as you know, they kind of want to. Beta needs to kind of rebound. Con wants to try to, you know, secure a little bit more space between them and the cutoff for playoffs. Yeah. And it is. This is a this is a tough one to call, right? Because Dorado has shown that they can win, but of course Khan has too. Um, Khan's bye week was last week, correct? Uh, no, they played. No, Beto's bye week is last week. Khan played the Crabs Radiant. Okay, so it, theoretically, Beta should be coming in with kind of a, a a refresher, right? You had last week off. You got to do your practices and figure some things out. I think this is, you're absolutely right, it's a turning point for Beta to make sure they start securing some of these wins against, well, everyone's technically higher than him in the standings, but you start securing yeah. some more points. Yeah. And then, uh, next matchup, we got Omega Kuma pairing Nice versus the Fraud team. Um, I think King Coney is going to be the MVP of this one. Yeah, yeah, King Coney's just been insane lately. I've, I feel like um, he's been everywhere, like, I feel like he's playing every lane. Yeah, yeah. No matter where you look, you, you find King right. Coney just King absolutely Coney. popping off, and it's really impressive. <laughs> I wish I didn't give the option to change everyone to the same name. I hate it. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. That that was a really unlucky, unlucky decision by Riot. Maybe not the best. Um, fraud but team. no, seriously, yeah. right? Fraud team. It's... Fraud team has a ch- opportunity, right? They have to. They're punching up for sure, but. If they can pull it off, I mean, it, it's an upset. Their one win was against uh, Crabs Radiant, and they lost to uh, Sticks last week, and then they lost to uh, lose to. They lost to Goofy Goopers. So, I mean, they lost to two really good teams in this division. I think this is going to be kind of like. Uh, what determines if this team is like going to make playoffs or not? 
Yeah, I, well, it, it has to be, right? Like, I, I think top four make playoffs in Diamond, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. So, I mean, you have to try to take one of a series off one of the top three teams. This is your, your kind of shot. Um, yeah. If not, you can't you can't drop points really anywhere else. So, I, yeah, I think for us, lose, it's a do or die. If you lose this one and go to one and three, you got to, like, buckle down. You have to beat Beta and then Khan. Because those are going to be your like the teams around the fraud team mm-hmm. who's going to contest you for this. But I'm pretty sure top three in this division is pretty much set. Um, I don't see uh, Sticks, Omega, or Goobers dropping below the playoff cutoff. Yeah, I I would agree with you. I think the maybe the only caveat right is if if Khan can figure some things out. Um, yep. Um. They they may be able to sneak into that third or even second spot if they really pop off, but um, it's going to be a tough road for them, that's for sure. Uh, okay, nice. Uh, well, um, whenever Leech Dog comes up, we got some interesting thing to talk about. So, Goofy Goobers on by this week. So. Congrats on getting four points. Yeah, big, big week. Big four points. And next up, we got Noxus. We got USAE Academy, the nameless stridium. Yeah, and I believe pretty. looking at standings, this is kind of a pretty important one for both of these teams. Yeah. Because you do uh, only get the six games. Uh, for US Army, this is kind of your, your time. You got to you start winning these games. Um, if you want to make that playoff push. Yep, and uh, USAE, uh, th- this this needs to be a turning point for them if they want to have any chance, because I feel like, I think if they drop this one, they go to 0-4, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, Obviously, Nameless is a one-on-one, one, so if they're going to have any chance to make playoffs, they got to take the win against this team. And obviously, if Nameless loses this one, then they're going to be in a pretty tough spot. Yeah, it's a, it's hard to... It's definitely a hard situation when you're you're uh, playing against that bottom team in your division because it's like, uh, this should be a free win, but you still have to put in all the same preparation. Because if you do lose, you're, in a, you're definitely in a worse position for it. Yep. Next matchup, we got Death Cards versus um, BCS Demolishers. This and, uh, might be a really good game. Yeah, I looking at both of these teams' schedule so far, I think um, being Chillers is maybe able to cause an upset here and and cause a little bit of chaos in Noxus, uh, my opinion. Although I do much prefer the logo of the Death Cards. Yeah, so Death Cards lost to the Toronto Game and Gamma 2-0. Um, Bing Chillers lost to Dorado Game Gamma as well, but it was a one-two. Mm-hmm. Um, so theoretically, if you use a transit of the property, Bing Chillers are better than Death Cards. Yeah. But if you look at standings, Death Cards are obviously above. Easier schedule. So, so I wouldn't even say it's an upset. Um, if Bing Chillers wins, I think these teams are pretty. I think evenly matched, in my opinion. Um, if Death Cards wins this, they pretty much secure uh, the third spot in this division. Big Chillers wins, then they start their run up to a playoff spot. Pretty much it. Also, isn't it cool that the Big Chillers logo is like a BC and then it's like an ice cream cone? Yes, I do really like that logo. This is a very clean logo to me. Death Cards logo is pretty cool too, but. Death Card logo. I want to get that tattooed on my face. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> I do. That actually look cool, man. Come on. Why would you get that logo tattooed on your Why would you get any tattoo of, like, a logo on your face? Yeah, just because please Because I'm don't. out here representing, and that's what you, that's what you guys are different about. No, you guys no. don't represent. That, I, you, don't right. need a, you don't need a tattoo on your face to represent. I can promise you that. 
Lane Zero Maelstrom is on a bye this week. So for our last matchup, we have Leash the Dog against Dorado Game and Gamma. Leash the Dog apparently just parted away with two players. And they're moving a sub to the main roster. And then they're trying to add a new player who will probably need to ease up. So they're going through some roster issues right now. Yeah, it's uh, not a great time because uh, you're playing against the number two team currently in the standing. So these the subs you're pulling in really banking that they're going to make huge impacts because if you lose this one, we're, we're going uh, yeah. down into that 1-3 territory where we talked about getting really hard making playoffs. From. And I'm not sure if, like, I didn't see what player they're adding, but if they're ineligible, they probably won't be able to field the roster tomorrow. So they would probably have to FF. But if they're not eligible, they will lose a couple bands. Um, in general, it is a moment of deciding what's going to happen. I don't know which players actually they parted with. They just told me they parted with two players. So, <clears throat> it's going to be an interesting one. Dorado Game Gamma, obviously, a really solid team. Um, they only dropped one game, and that was to... Uh, um, BCS demolishers, <clears throat> but yeah, I think Gamma. I think Gamma takes this one. Um, what is sure. the Gamma versus Maelstrom series? Because that's gonna be a banger. Versus Maelstrom. <clears throat> let's see. Let's see. Oh, week five doesn't God, work. Tracks. You have to go to like week three, and then week five. Tracks and screwed it up. Oh, now cool. I'm going to have to force to fix it. He does this, and then he goes dark for, like, a year. Yeah, it happens to the best of us. Oh, is this going to be week seven? Oh, it is going to be week seven. Oh, man, for, for the number one seed, potentially. Yeah, there's a chance that both teams are just undefeated until that point. Yep. And uh, that's going to be an interesting one. That's definitely going to be the stream game, without a doubt, on week seven. But overall, um, decently close standings. Um, I still think if you know ever, any team has a chance to make it, it's like no team is really out. I think if there's anything that I feel like is you know losing their opportunity is going to be USAE Academy, mostly because they're their only team that's 0-3. Um, mm -hmm. The other um, no-win teams are 0-2 because they've had their buys. But... With that being said, that is going to be it for Otter Talk. Thank you, Janice, for joining me today. Thank you, Pease, for producing and joining us today as well. Thank you, our guests that said they they are out of town till Monday. So, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's been a it's been a ride. It's been a ride. Yep. Got to make sure Otter Talk is going, and hopefully, Leopard is feeling good next week because <laughs> this uh takes a long time. Takes a lot out of you. <laughs> well, yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks for everyone for watching. Yeah, thank you all for joining us. And again, if you have them primes, man, make sure you be dropping them. Yeah, we need true. them. Three dollars. Drop them primes. Three dollars, please. Actually, you know, prime, you get. Okay, so prime, you get like two dollars and like forty. No, wait, is it the opposite? Yeah, so you get like two dollars and like forty cents for Prime, and then you get like two dollars and like nineteen cents for like a paid sub. So you get more for Prime than you do for subs. Yeah. Yep. Well, there you go. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Give us the primes. We don't want the subs. No, wait. We'll take the subs too. Actually, you know what? Just give us what you want. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it all. Take it all. We'll take it all. All right. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again next time. Peace. Bye-bye.